Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and a new video and color repaint challenge. Since a whole lot of you guys requested for me to use all black art supplies and turn it into a grayscale doll, that's what we'll be doing today. So I'll be using only black and white art supplies and mixing them together to create gray shades. And I haven't added any gray pencils, paint, whatever I might have had in this, just because sometimes it's a warmer gray, which means it has undertones of something else. And I wanted to keep it very pure, so I'll be mixing all the shades myself. Compared to the other challenges, there's a very few things here. So I have black and white acrylic paint, watercolor pencils, uh, chalk pastel in white and black, and then I also had white and black glitter. For once, I didn't include any yarn, which I normally brush out and use for doll hair, because I'll actually be working on this Frankie doll from Master High that I bought new, which means that her hair isn't all tangled and gross, and it is actually black and white to start with, so it really fit the theme. And I chose to use a Frankie just because her skin was very pale, and yet it wasn't black or white or grey, which meant that the colors would just stand out a little more, because I thought about using a Spectra doll, but she is bright white and then the white would just have no highlight effect at all, so that's why I went for this one. So, sparing the hair for once, let's just remove the factory paint with some acetone and prime the face with Mr. Super Clear. I also covered her hair in a piece of fabric so that I wouldn't get any sealant into her hair because it really mattifies it and makes it go all weird, so try to avoid that. And then we could get on to actually repainting. I started by using the black pencil to sketch out the eyes pretty lightly so I could figure out the shape and how I wanted it to look because I usually go by the actual face mold of the doll unless I'm trying to do a character onto a doll where it doesn't really fit then I alter the shape but I try to usually go by what comes natural for the doll but after that then you have to decide whether or not you want the eyes to be a little angled and then a point do you want to be rounded and then how big do you want the actual iris to be because that also has a big effect on the look of the doll if it's very cute or not. So I tried to figure that out in the beginning and then once I have that down I sketch it onto the other side trying to get the eyes as evenly as possible and then I kind of just go on autopilot and you know do what I usually do when I repaint dolls. I'll quickly just apologize for the angle of the camera. I had it set up a little weird apparently because whenever I flip the doll to look at me so I could see what I was doing, it sometimes got a lot of frames, so I'm sorry about that. I found that I didn't find this challenge quite as difficult as I did the previous ones, and I pretty quickly realized why, because there is such a difference in what do you say, value between white and black, one being the darkest of the spectrum and one being the lightest, you know, both are kind of just lack of color really. But that just means that you have a lot of contrast and that just makes it a whole lot easier. And then you can mix the two and get all the shades in between. So this just makes it, well, essentially just a lot easier because you can have a lot of difference in value. So I decided that I wanted the irises gray and then I added some black lines on top, some lighter grey paint I mixed up to add a bit more detail in other lines and I could use completely black for the pupil and you know bright white for the uh, highlights. So you can get a lot of difference in tones and that just makes it a lot easier. There are some dangers though when you use only black for instance for shading, which I don't think is good color theory in real life if you want to draw or paint. Shading something with pure black just makes it look a little muddy I guess and I was very careful and only shaded the doll very lightly around the temples, sides of the nose, beneath the cheekbones. I did it very faintly because there was just such a big chance of her just looking dirty and we didn't want that. So. I did this very faintly and then I used the white to really highlight the you know, tops of the cheeks and a bit on the forehead, trying to bring out different shades as much as possible. But that was one thing I found with this challenge that even though you can have a lot different in value, I thought it was a little hard to keep you know, it very looking interesting because it is just 
well this isn't even truly monochromatic I guess but you know because there was no pop of color it was there was not much to really draw the eye to so therefore I really tried to intensify the black areas for instance making the outer edge of the makeup faded out really black and then having you know the white highlights and I later did some pretty harsh white highlights on the face using the acrylic paint like on the cupid's bow a little along the eyelid and the waterline to really make places pop and really stand out against the dark areas. When you have so few materials to work with, you get very conscious of how you use certain things. So having both watercolor pencils, chalk pastel and acrylic paint is really the ideal scenario for me at least when I repaint. Just because they do such different things and when you combine them I think it's just, you know, optimal situation. The acrylic paints is the most, you know, harsh one, goes on very opaque so you can get it to pop really quickly and you can build up layers and opacity much quicker where the Pencil is a slightly softer option, but you can build up the layers to make it opaque if you want to, but you can choose to have it be more transparent and you can also faint it out slightly. And it has the bonus of having the watercolor effect, so you can actually you know, almost simulate um, the effect of acrylic paint if you apply it with a wet brush, because you can get more opacity that way. And the chalk pastel, at least the way I use them, is for shading, highlighting, whatever. It is just so much softer and that is an effect that is just really hard to simulate with other types of materials. So they each serve a purpose and you know when you mix them that's when you could you know all around the spectrum. So that's how I prefer to work. If I were to you know subtract something that would probably be the acrylic paint because you can substitute the pencils for that if you use the watercolor effect or just build up the layers many many times. It would be harder to you know, lose either the chalk pastel or the pencil because doing a, a doll with only pastel would be a little iffy. Um, so I think if I could actually only choose one type, I would probably go for the pencil. But oh lord, that would be a challenge. Overall, I think the face turned out really cute. I really enjoy this face mold and I got to do my shaded eyes and very smoked out crease, which I like and I do in, in a lot of my dolls. So I thought it was really, you know, in my style and I think she turned out really cute. I was actually really happy with the choice of the doll, both for the face mold, but also because the black and white theme just really fit on her skin and I think it turned out looking really nice. For this one I didn't paint on any upper lashes, I just did eyeliner because I'll be adding three dimensional lashes like I usually prefer to do because they're all black so I felt like, you know, that's within, you know, the limits of the challenge so yay, <laughs> back in my comfort zone, woo! And I also added some freckles to this one just because I've done it to all the color challenge dolls and I just really thought it's so cute, I don't know why I didn't use freckles much in my work before but loving it so i added those in as well and once i was happy with the face i seal it in for the final time to incorporate the glitter a little differently this time i decided to add it on the bodice as almost like a corseted top so i painted on the shape that I wanted in paint first and then glue glitter on top and I also just changed the doll into a white skirt and some black tights that I had saved from another doll. But if you want to add glitter directly onto the doll's body like this you have to be mindful of the joints because if you get glue and glitter in the joints the doll won't be able to move properly so therefore it only fits if you know it only works out if you do it on the bodice part like I'm doing here.
added some small flat back bows, which were actually nail art supplies I had in black on for her earrings. I didn't really have any rhinestones to incorporate into this because none of the rhinestones I had were clearly white or black, so that's why they're not in this challenge. And here's the eyelashes that I glued on, and I always trim them once I have them on the doll so I can see what length I want them. And then I glaze both the eyes and the lips just because I really feel that it brings out the color. And here she is all done. I really hope you guys enjoyed this challenge. As I mentioned, I thought she turned out really cute, so I'm really happy with her. If you guys are still enjoying these type of challenges, be sure to hit the like button because that really helps me out. And if you want to see more and have requests for colors, other types of challenges, whatever, just leave them in the comments below so I can see. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in a new video, Rizzo. Bye!